Hear the bells. The reflection on the dome of the rock. I don't recall such a sustained ringing. I'm not sure if they're the Holy Sepulchre bells, but I, I, I can't tell you with certainty. So, Friday morning, but it's still Thursday evening in California. So we continue to wish Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving Day, a blessed Thanksgiving Day, a day filled with gratitude. And when you see a sky like this, your heart rises. It rises with the sun rising. And you want to give thanks. You want to catch the train? I think this is the Franciscan one right here beside us. So we have the sun rising over the big dome of the Holy Sepulchre where the sun rose. When I look at that cross that's illuminated there, the light is very stable when I look with my natural eye. But there in the screen, it's flickering for some, obviously some reason that I don't know how to explain. We can go in there and see it more closely. Oh, they're stable again. Huh, isn't that strange? That's the way I see it here with my natural eye. But then you go in there, it starts dancing around. Interesting. So good morning, people. Happy Thanksgiving to all the people in California. May the Lord bless you. All the people in the west coast of the Americas. Maybe there's some islands, maybe Alaska. Is Hawaii already in today? Well, every country is going to say there today, as we live in the present, hopefully. But uh, I'm not sure where the date line is, if Hawaii is in yesterday or it's in today, <laughs> from my perspective here. So everybody else who's over there, and they're still having their little celebrations. We had a lovely Thanksgiving day yesterday, really, really lovely. Uh, after our work in Magla in the morning, we got here to Jerusalem a little bit delayed. Uh, we came down the Jordan Valley. We haven't done that for a while, but now with the, with the um, ceasefire, it's amazing not to hear any aircraft in the sky, any military aircraft. Those pilots can be with their families and people on the ground don't have to shudder in fear. It's a gift to have a ceasefire and to be a bigger gift if there's a truce and eventually a peace agreement.
and that maintained and educated, and we rejoice over that. And that's a great reason for us to be thankful here in the Holy Land. Really thankful. And we pray that there'll be definitive solutions and changes of heart, and also good policy, good application on the ground, because they say prevention is the best, is the better cure. And we need, and for ourselves as well, health-wise, to do prevention, good diet, good behavior, nourish our soul in the right way, not just our body. All of that contributes to our well-being. And prevention is much better. A stitch on time saves nine. An old proverb when people had to stitch by hand, stitch a lot of things. And if you got that stitch in on time, you didn't have a big rip and a big tear and the need for a lot more sewing and stitching and so forth. So let's pray for common sense. Let's pray for justice because without justice, there's no peace. And obviously different people have different attitudes to what's just about the size of the portion of cake I get and my little brother get and my big brother get and my little sister gets. And how much do I get? How much do I want? How much do I demand? How much do I need? How can we live together in peace? And we pray for that. We pray for that great grace. And we make lots of effort on this earth to, earth to do things. But there's a big lesson today in the first reading with all its fa wonderful, fanciful, uh, imaginative, uh, filled with, with uh, it's, it blows our imagination, our fantasy when we read it. Do you notice how the, the mountains of Moab are there at the level of the cross? You can see as far as Jordan. So, uh, where are we in the story? Ah, the wonderful lesson in the first reading is from the, uh, we're still at the book of Revelation. Tomorrow will be the last day. We'll be starting a new liturgical year after that. And it'll be the first Sunday of Advent, the day after tomorrow. So, uh, the message is that all the efforts we're doing to be faithful in times of great trial is actually just a, a minimal preparation for the heavenly Jerusalem coming down from heaven. And the heavenly Jerusalem is coming down like a bride in her magnificent raiment ready to meet her husband. And that imagery brings us back to Adam and Eve and creation. And that imagery uh, it conjures up that whole, the beauty, the peak of creation, but now it's a redeemed creation. And just like God didn't start off the a new creation after this one failed, and we remember that here at the Dome of the Rock and pious uh, reflections place the creation of Adam and Eve here and in the heavenly Jerusalem because God renews the creation that was fallen. If a child isn't behaving well, you don't throw out the child and go and get another child. You educate the child, you lift up the child. If your spouse has some major issue, you work with the spouse, you don't throw him out and look for another one. Although our society thinks differently there. But that's the, the wonderful, the wonderful, um, that's, a, that's the whole mystery of redemption, redeeming. The whole mystery of re redemption. And we have an issue with throwaway culture in our society. We throw away stuff that doesn't work. How many people will buy so many things today and throw them away tomorrow? And we need a, a redemptive culture to stitch it, <laughs> to stitch the tear. How many things we used to fix on the farm and as children. And one of the problems is with the cost of labor that it becomes cheaper to, to buy a new one rather than pay the work to fix things. And that's also an issue, how we can have justice for the worker and value for the things we develop. Obviously, things wear out and they no longer have further use and they're recycled for other things, you know. But when this is applied to people, we can't throw away people. 
and the heavenly Jerusalem is coming down here to completely renew the Jerusalem. The Lord is granting us salvation. That's the, really the big, big message. I'm going to read the text for you because it's so beautiful. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. After all the travails of this world, after the conquering of evil, after the falling of the evil, of, of the evil city, I saw a new heaven. I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. But actually, it's Jerusalem, and it's us, and it's us redeemed, and Jerusalem redeemed. It's not throw away the other Jerusalem. It's the, the grace, the heavenly grace that's coming. And it's built on the 12 foundations of the foundation stones of the apostles. And the doors, the tribal doors entering into the, the city on top of that foundation of the apostles. It's amazing how things get turned around. The first, last will be first and the first will be last. Here God lives among his people. That's our Psalm, Psalm 84. And again, that's the theme. He walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. In the cool breeze of the evening. And here God lives among his people. And then the word, the name Emmanuel, which will become a common theme then during Advent and Christmas. God with his people. You know, the great symphonies and uh, works of music have themes that come through and recur as do the great works of literature. There can be a lot of imagination and fantasy about the frills and the narrative and all, but the main themes, the underlying themes, the underlying melodies, the underlying strains of music coming through and through again and again and again in new forms and new little twists. And here we have the heavenly Jerusalem coming down. Here lives God among his people. God wants to be with us. He always did. And estrangement from God is such a challenge, such a suffering for the human person, for the soul. Oh, by the way, I had a wonderful visit with a priest here in Jerusalem. And obviously we were talking a little bit about peace. And uh, he said that St. Teresa had a great line that if you want to have peace in the world, close the door of your room gently. It starts there with the children, teaching the children little things of peace to develop people with hearts of peace. And that brings peace on the world, but this is also the little things we do here, the heavenly Jerusalem comes down. It's God's doing, but it's not disconnected from our doing. There's a very strong connection that peaked here at Calvary and in the tomb and the rising of, of our Lord. Here lives God among his people. Your redemption is at hand, the Hallelujah verse. And then we have, when the buds burst open, you see for yourselves in the trees that summer is now near. That beautiful image, how nature speaks to us also of how God's doings are accomplished. So all these things were all the trials and travails that we endure and go through. And this is the work of consolation of the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is particularly a work of consolation, of strengthening of discouraged Christians who are deeply stressed and harassed by a persecuting society around them. And this is to inspire courage and that the heavenly Jerusalem is coming and that the evil um, governance of the world, all the defects we have, parents have in dealing with their children, maybe too severe or too lax or irresponsible or all the defects people have in business, in the management of their company, in the relationships with their workers. You know, that human faulty regime will transition to God's kingdom. God's among us, that's kingdom is among us. He's reigning. And he's bringing all that grace from heaven to transform us with our collaboration.
we leave it like that for today, people. It's been great to be with you. And happy Thanksgiving to those who are still celebrating because right now it's 6.42. That means even in New York, it's Thanksgiving Day in the West, in the East Coast of the Americas. So then how about the West Coast and the Midwest and the Rockies and Alaska and out into the Pacific? People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Little selfie moment here so you can see that I'm here. There we go. Happy Thanksgiving. That's, every day is Thanksgiving, really, because we have so much to thank the Lord for. See you later, alligators.